Turn your Bibles to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. What are we going to be on tonight? We're going to be on heaven number three and number four tonight. You say what? I'll show you in the Bible. I'll show you in the Bible. There's three heavens. <laughs> then there's a fourth. You say a fourth? You, you got to show me in the Bible. I will. I will. Don't take my word for it. If it ain't in the Bible, don't take anybody's word for it. You just take the Word of God. Uh, always the Word of God is above what any... Paul said, if I come back and preach another gospel than you and that which you ever see, let me be accursed. But anything I show you, show you from the Word of God. But heaven is where we're going to be tonight. Let's look at John chapter 14. This is read at funerals a whole lot of times. But I want to start off. I can't think of a better place to start than John chapter 14. Stand with me, if you will, in honor of the reading of the Word of God. Get somewhere, hang on. We're going to go far as we can. I don't know if we'll get all the way through heaven tonight. We may have, this may be a carryover, uh, but we will find out. John 14. Sir? If the rapture don't happen, we'll finish it next Sunday. All right. Amen. If it does, Tommy will finish it. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah. After he done that last time, I, 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 I shouldn't even try. I, I shouldn't even try after that. I've heard. Amen. Yeah. He's going to go ahead of me. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. All right, here we go. But, uh, 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 all right, here we go. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place, I love those next two words, for you, he says. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be, also, we're going where Jesus is. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Help us as we study tonight, as we look into the place called heaven. God, we just look what your word has to say for us. We sure look forward to that day. God, I know with a feeble mind of a man, how, God, can I even think to describe the glories that you've got prepared. You said in your word, God, God, that it hadn't even entered into the heart of man the things that you've prepared for us, but it, God reveals them unto us by your spirit. So I pray that tonight your spirit would have full sway in this service, that you could open your word and let us see on the other side. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. I've heard all my life Oh, I have not seen, ear hadn't heard, it hadn't entered the heart of man, the things that God's prepared for him. And everybody stops there. The next verse says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. What he's saying is, natural man cannot grasp heaven. But the spiritual man can grasp heaven. You say, How? How does it enter the heart of man? By the Spirit of God. Why? The Spirit of God's already been there. Amen. He is there. He's there and here, and He indwells you. And so He actually, when you, you know, when, uh, when people are off, talk to people in the military all over the world, and they've gone and they'll be, they'll be across the sea and be somewhere else, they'll bump into somebody and they'll be like, where are you from? And when they find out that they're within an hour or two of their hometown, all of a sudden, man, it talks about the splendor and the grand... I mean, they talk about schools. They talk about roads. They talk about where they fished. They talk about what they've done. Who they're, how's your mom and them? I mean, it goes... You talk about all those things. And it gives them a taste of home. They have something in common. They have roots in the same place. As we talk about this place called heaven... For the child of God, it's like in a world that we are pilgrims and strangers, but we bump into each other and realize that we are from the same place and our feet call home the same place on the other side. And there's something about the reunion when we start talking about those things and it creates 
a feeling in us that we realize, hey, you know what? That's what I'm looking forward to. Jesus said, I go to prepare what? A place for you. Well, let's look first of all at the three heavens. You say the what? The three heavens. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 2. This is Paul talking. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse number 2. He says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth such as one, such in one, caught up to the, what does it say? Third the third heaven. You say, what in the world is the three heavens? I'm not going to give you a lot of references, but I'll let you go back and read them. In Genesis, the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible talks about He calls the birds to fly in the heavens. The Bible says in another passage that the stars, that He placed them in the heavens. And then Paul says, I caught one, I caught up to the third heaven. Heaven number one's where the birds fly. They're in the heavens. They fly up in the heavens. Heaven number two is where the stars are. It's beyond our atmosphere. Heaven number three is where God is. You say, how do you know? He talks about it in this passage, and he talks about after he is caught up, he said he saw things, and he went on to say about things there. So heaven number one, like I said before, you can get to heaven number one with an airplane, heaven number two with a rocket, but it takes the blood of Jesus to get to heaven number three. All right? And you say, well, is that important? It really is, and we'll look forward. Last Wednesday night, we actually looked at paradise being caught up into heaven and moved. And we know now heaven, paradise, is up. Amen. The Bible says that it is. But let me show you something else that a lot of people do not know. You say, what about where God is now? What's it called? Well, look in Revelation chapter 4 and we'll take a door. We're going to open a door and take a look. All right? Revelation chapter 4. I have lost my, my laser, ah, here it is, laser pointer. All right. In Revelation number four, go to the slide. I got heaven, do you really want to go? The book of Revelation. Go there. All right. Now, just before we get into that, I'll let you look. The book of Revelation is broke up into four divisions. It's divided by the phrase, I was in the Spirit. If you read your Bible, you'll see that phrase four times in the book of the Revelation. Four times. How many times? Four. four times. And the first time, he was on the Isle of Patmos, and he said, I was in the Spirit, and he saw who? Christ. Saw Jesus Christ. The second time is in chapter 4, and that's what we're going to look at right now. Chapter 4, he is in, the, in this phrase, he says... Uh, in verse number 1, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened, where at? Where at? In heaven. And the first voice which I heard is if it were a trumpet talking with me. The Bible said in the other passage, what did it say? The, the trump of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise. And he says, talking with me, which said, Come up hither. That's the next time that phrase is used. Go back to that slide just a second. And he said, I'll show you the things that must be hereafter. The third time, he said, I was in the Spirit, the spirit and he carried me away in, sh in the wilderness. And he shows me that the great horror of Revelation. And then the last time is in chapter 21, verse 10, and he talks about the bride of Christ. Now, it's kind of strange. Three of the four times, one, we get a, a view of Christ. And you say, where is he at? In heaven. Second one, we get a rapture, and we look, and we got a door in heaven. Where are we at? In heaven. Number the fourth time, here we get a view in the Spirit, and it's the bride of Christ coming down out of heaven. Three out of four times, it lets us look on the other side of what's coming down. I like that, that four times in the Spirit, there is uh, something mentioned, three of the four looks up instead of down. Amen? Because I like looking up instead of looking down. And that's what we're doing. Now, go to the next thing. In chapter 4, we see, and then he talks about the things which must be hereafter. And that's, we know what those are. He says, uh, another way the book is divided, if you'll read in Revelation 1.19, he says, write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which must be hereafter. 
three, that's a phrase, Revelation 119. It's divided in this. What he has seen was a vision of Christ. He said, the things which are, that's the seven churches of Asia. And then he said, the things which shall be hereafter. That's Revelation 119. This word hereafter is in Revelation chapter 4. He said, why is it important? He said here, he said, and after this, he, he looks and he says, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And then he goes on, the end, last part of the verse, that I will show thee the things which must be hereafter. He's going to show it. So this is how the book is, is broke down. You say, why is this important? Revelation 4, he says what he sees. The first glimpse we get of the door that's opened in heaven, the first glimpse that we get into heaven is in Revelation chapter 4. We get to see the throne and him that sits on the throne and Jesus, by the faith, just, just for the sake of letting you know, Jesus is the most important thing that's there. Amen. So before he shows us heaven, he shows us him. I like that because in Revelation 1, he said, I saw him and his face shined and his feet and his breath. You say, why is that? Because the book of Revelation, the title of the book says the revelation of St. John the Divine in some Bibles. Some has the revelation of this. I believe the book in, in most Bibles, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ in your subtitle. I believe that's the best title for the book. Why? Because it's the first words in the book of the Revelation. It said the revelation of Jesus Christ. I think, can't think of a better title. By the way, titles of books in the Bible was given by man, not by God. Amen. Shake your head like this. Because uh, I can give you the Song of Solomon and tell you what it was called. You've never even looked at it. All right, now, you say, what? I'll give it to you later. All right, here we go. <laughs> Revelation chapter 4, and he looks. Now, let's go into heaven. Is that all right with you? Y'all yeah. ready? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting a bus load. Yeah. Uh, anybody? All right, here we go. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. All right, here we go. Next. Go to the, the slide. All right. The first glimpse we get into heaven as we look. How, how do you think John felt when that door opened and he got to look up? <laughs> yeah. I, I've got it back there on, on as far as music uh, on a, a video, a song music, like we can sing along with the words like we sing with. It's a video music says, I can only imagine. I got it in my office. I almost brought it out tonight and said after we got done, but I figured some of y'all would jump pews and run half y'all out of here. All right, here we go. The authority in heaven, the first thing that we get, he says, he looks in heaven. And immediately, in verse 2, I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set where? In heaven. You say, why is that important? I told you I, I, I would tell you about four heavens. Is that what I said? Heaven number one, we said, is where the birds fly. Heaven number two is where the stars are. Heaven number three is where God is. And heaven number four is in Revelation 21 where he says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. You say, what do you mean? That's what the Bible said. The old has passed away. So you say, whoa, that's pretty good. But right now in our time, there's only three. <laughs> But in the future, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, the Bible said. Is that true? All right. So when you ask somebody, somebody asks, say, how many heavens are you? And you tell them, four. They go, huh? You go, yeah, three is now and one's to come. <laughs> but that's true. All right. How many heavens? Because he said there's three now and one to come. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now, in Revelation 4, the first glimpse we get is the throne set in heaven. One that's set on the throne. He said, he that was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. We're going to get into the stones a little bit later, but I really think this is pretty neat. If I taught on the book of Revelation for those that was here. When you get into the stones, they're really neat. Jasper is the color of the glory of God, and it's the clearest jasper. The stone now jasper has been a... That name has been attributed to a stone many years after, and it's kind of a greenish color stone. But the jasper in the Bible is older. The word is older than the new word for jasper now. So the stone jasper in the Bible is older in terms than the stone now. So we really don't know what the color is. You say, well, what do you think it is? I ain't going to tell you. Amen. All right, here we go. But anyway, it's clear we know that, but the Bible says something else about it. There's authority when we look into heaven. When we look into heaven, the first thing we see is a throne. When you see a throne, what do you think of? A king. 
When you, I have people all the time say, I tell you what, I can't wait to go to heaven. Woo! I'm going to be free to do what I want to. First glimpse, we get the throne. <laughs> you say, wait just a minute. So when I get to heaven, I'm going to be under authority of a king? Oh yeah, the king of kings and lord of lords. You are going to be. The first thing we get, a glimpse into heaven, is authority. He cannot stand chaos. Amen. Amen. He is the opposite of chaos. There is authority in heaven. Then look on down. He says not only is there authority in heaven, go to the next slide. There's a peril. You say, how do you know? Verse number 4. And he says, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And we'll look at those in a minute. And I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment. You know what? There's going to be clothes in heaven. We know what the Bible, the fight the fine linen is. The Bible said the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Is that what it says? Revelation 19.8 says it. It said that it is the righteousness of the saints. So it said they're clothed. Say, so when I get to heaven, woohoo! You're going to have on righteousness. Amen. In our day and time, it's hard to get folks to wear clothes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. When they get to heaven, they'll be clothed in righteousness. If you go, you say, well, hang on a second. You mean I'm going to be clothed with a garment down to the foot? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have authority over me? Oh, oh that's horrible. You think that's bad? Look at the next phrase. He, the next slide, he says, boom, there's going to be an atmosphere. <laughs> you say, what's the atmosphere? Well, let's just look at it. In verse number 5, he says, oh, we've got to look at those here. These elders here, it said 24 of them, they have on their heads crowns. Now, these crowns are like the victor's crowns. We talked about crowns and judgment last week. But the only place we find in Scripture where crowns cast at the Savior's feet is in the book of Revelation. It's only mentioned one time. It's the only time you find it in Scripture. But every child of God that I've ever met anywhere, and you ask them, what are we going to do with our crowns? Everyone, without fail, everyone says, we will all cast them at His feet. And I think that is strange because there is only one Scripture in all the Bible that says that. And it doesn't say that we will. It said the 24 elders do. Now you think, well, what makes you think we will? I believe the Spirit of the living God that comes in the child of believer knows that that is so. I believe that, that He knows that man does not deserve anything but to cast them at His feet. But anyway, there's an, uh, an atmosphere in heaven. What's the atmosphere? Look down in verse number 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, Voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, for those that are just like the what? The seven spirits of God. They're mentioned over in, I believe it's Isaiah, and he talks about the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of, and he talks about seven different characteristics of the seven spirits of God. All right? But it is really one Holy Spirit, just like there's one God. But the seven spirits there are mentioned are, are uh, names for different aspects of the seven um, aspects of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, and before the throne, it said there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were what? Four beasts full of eyes before and behind. The first beast was like a what? Everybody look in your Bible or look up on the screen. The first beast was like a what? Lion. Lion. The second beast was like a? The third beast had the face as a? And the fourth beast was like a? Now, if you don't know, I think it's really neat. I've said it before, but I love this. The four spirits around the, the four creatures around the throne of God, they're actually mentioned again over in the Old Testament. They, and they got six wings, and you, you'd have to go back and you'd have to look that. They're in um, Isaiah chapter number six. You go back there and you can look and you can find them. But you will, if you go back and you look at those, you'll find out that these creatures, there's four of them. Go back to the picture. They're around the throne of God. They got six wings. They cover their face. They got two to fly. They got two to cover their feet. 
And they got here. But here they are. The first one has the face of a what? Lion. Second one, the face of a calf. Third one, the face of a man. Fourth one, the face of a flying eagle. All right. So the four faces. Now, it's really neat. If you read your Bible and you study, I really think it's just neat. The four preachers that we call them, the four Gospels in the Scripture, in Matthew, Jesus is the line of the tribe of Judah in the book of Matthew. All throughout the book, He is the King of the Jews. He is the line of the tribe of Judah. In Mark, He's the servant. In Mark, He shows Him He's the servant of God. It testifies more about Jesus being a servant than any other book. In Luke, he is the Son of Man. If you go through the book of Luke, he's called the Son of Man, and it talks about the miracles and the healings more than any of the books in the third one. In the fourth one, he is the divine Son of God, and if you ain't read your Bible enough to understand that the eagle is a picture of divinity and the divine Son of God, my stars, my stars, you have missed a good study there. So we've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John around the throne of God. You say, why is that important? Because they all testify to this one <laughs> that's sitting. There's the seven spirits before, 24 elders around. You say, my goodness, heaven's going to be a wonderful place. <laughs> Don't be shocked when you get there. You get there and you say, oh, I know this place. Brother Jimmy talks to us about it. You're going to look at it and say, it's a whole lot prettier than what you said. Hey, man, I know that. But he says something here. What is the? What are they going to be doing? I said there was the atmosphere. Verse number eight. And the four and beast that had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, "What are they saying? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come." It said they rest not when day or night. Do you know what? If you could get a glimpse in heaven right this very second, you know what you'd hear? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. You say, well, what if I go tomorrow? You walk in, you know what you're going to hear? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. You say, what? when John looked, what did he see? They sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. You might as well get used to hearing it. You say, Preacher, I'm tired of hearing it already. Oh, no. All throughout eternity, they're around the throne saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. But I have a feeling they're going to be doing it and it'll be in perfect harmony. It'll be like a sound around the throne that you'll make out. But I, I, I guarantee you, it will be something that will be just, just have holiness coming out of it. We'll hear it around the throne of God as they're there. Why? Because they was created to tell God He's holy. Why? Because He's holy. This, this view that people's got of God now, like, yeah, God's like the big daddy in the sky. He's my friend. He is a friend that's sticking close to her brother. But don't you ever, 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 ever forget He is holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. You don't go be bopping up in there and, and His presence walking in, popping bubble gum and saying, oh, oh God, how you doing today, buddy? I want you to know when you see Him, you'll fall at His feet as dead. You'll fall down and you'll say, oh, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. You will be in awe at His presence. He is, he is altogether lovely. You say, well, I'm not, I don't want to be scared of Him. No, you won't be scared. The holiness of God will just be like, oh. It'll be like trying to drink out of a wall, out of fire hydrant. <laughs> you just... I'd like to get you a little drink. Say, I want to see him. <laughs> when it hits you, it's just going to be, he is altogether lovely. You say, oh, my stars. I can't wait to see heaven. Then he shows what goes on from there. And we're not going to get a, a chance to look much further on there. But you'll look. He's got seven things. He's got things there. You go read chapter 5. And they're all saying, worthy is the Lamb. Matter of fact, go ahead and read verse five, uh, chapter 5, verse 12. We need that just because we got the elders. And we, I, let me show you the crowd that's there. <laughs> I love the crowd. 
I love God's people, don't you? And I can't, I want to be with God's people. You say, hang on a second. I don't like church. I don't like God's people. Then what makes you think you'll enjoy heaven? You say, well, I'm going to go fishing with my grandpa. Your grandpa, if he knows Jesus, is going to be on that throne saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. He ain't going to be thinking about fishing. He's going to be realizing what, who he is and what he's done for him. It's a whole different place than a lot of people have an idea about. You say, what are they doing? Well, verse 9 says they're going to sing a new song. Isn't that good to know? Isn't that good? Do you know we'll all be on key? Say amen. amen. Isn't that, won't that be good? Amen? amen? Can you hear it? I mean, I, I can see throughout all eternity, somebody look over and go, ready, go. And they go, behold, he comes. Behold, he comes. I mean, think about that. Think about, I mean, millions. Behold, he comes. Behold, he comes. And have millions of people ready to go, and every eye shall see him. And I want you to know, we look to him. I want you to know, whoo, glory to God. I mean, I'll get them bumps all over and be running around the throne of God. You'll see me going, whoo, making laps around the throne of God. You say, that's just crazy. Listen, I want you to know, when you see him, there's going to be praise like you've never heard before. He says here, in verse 9, he talks about the song. And he says, they sung a new song. Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy tongue, by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And hast made us under our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. I don't know the tune of the song, but we're going to have a song. That's the song. That's the words to the song. Isn't that good to know? You already got them. Then he says, And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. You say, why did he say that? Because that's the biggest number in Greek they had. <laughs> 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. He said it's the biggest number times the biggest number <laughs> plus thousands of thousands. You know what he said? I can't imagine, I cannot imagine the numbers, but it was there around the throne of God. Somebody said, heaven's not going to have very many people there. Oh yeah, heaven's very populated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brother Jim Andrews said, said if everybody in heaven give a dollar we can pay off our national debt amen but, but anyway but he says what are we going to be doing in verse number 12 they're going to be saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing let's try that together they will say with a loud voice, ready? Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. I can hear Moses look over at Abraham and say, they're rehearsing. <laughs> they're rehearsing. I can see Esther say, look at there. David says, my goodness, you pump a little life in them Baptists, they might get it, Amen. Worthy. Let's try it again. Ready? Well, they're going to say what? Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and, and wisdom and, and strength and, and, and honor and, and glory and, and blessing. Do you know what? We're going to have a time around God. Amen? It'd be good. Y'all learn that verse. Amen? I, uh, and I know it ain't in your Bible drill list, but you ought to learn that when you say why. Because you won't have to learn it when you get there. Amen. Amen. You'll already have it. They'll say, and we're going to sing a song, and everybody says, you'll look back. I know this one. Amen. And you'll be able to say it. They're going to, we're going to be around the throne of God. Now, let's go forward. Heaven is a wonderful place. The atmosphere in heaven. But then we talked about the seven years of tribulation. Remember? Seven years of tribulation, while they're going on down here, guess where we're at? Marriage Supper of the Lamb. 
Is that good? Now see, you got excitement on that. Amen. You talk to even the young people. Baptists get excited about food. Amen. These, these are future deacons and, and, and over here. Amen. But he said, we will be at the marriage supper of the Lamb enjoying the things of heaven while this world is going through chaos. Where will we be? In heaven. You say, heaven? That's exactly right. When someone dies right now, if you're a child of God, absent from the body, is present with the Lord. You say, where is he at? said, right here, he was in heaven. And so when someone dies as a child of God, they are in heaven. You said, wait a minute. Wednesday night, you said paradise and move. Paradise and heaven are the same place. Amen. That's where they're at. We are in the, going to a place called heaven. Then let's go a little further. There's the marriage. By the way, this is all of us together. Amen? That's, this is, we're getting ready for the groom, by the way. <laughs> oh, I want to see him look upon his face. <laughs> oh, my, 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 what a day that will be. Let me stop right there and just say this. Several years ago in church, these banners like that prepare our risen king got to be a little thing. And I was in a church, and there was folks that didn't, they didn't get real excited. I mean, they'd be like, yay, you know, kind of just a little amen if you, you pumped them real good, you know. You, you, I mean, it just, they wasn't real excitable. You could have put, you could have put a, a, a wire under the front pew and, and lined the deacon board up and hit a button for them praise and they'd have, they'd have, they'd have, they'd have got electrocuted because they didn't want to jump. Amen. They had to just they'd sit there and held it to keep from, from jumping up. But we started singing that, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and power, glory and power and praise for thou hast created has all things created thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are created thou art worthy O Lord I want you to know the congregation was singing that and we'd had people make up banners <laughs> that said king of kings and then another one said, Lord of Lords. We had one, Lion of the Tribe of Judah. We had one. And I want you to know, when, when everybody started singing, we had young people come in, and they had them on poles, and they was walking, and they turn around to the crowd, and they start seeing the names of God, and we're singing, Thou art worthy. And that, I want you to know, that place come unglued for just a minute. They had a Baptist fit. <laughs> Amen. I mean, it come unglued and folks was praising God and having a time because they realized, you know what? One of these days, we will be around the very throne of God. And the ones you think you're quiet, the Bible said they will say with a loud voice. You'll be like, oh my goodness, I want in on this. What a day that will be. Amen? What a day. Go to the next slide. Then look over. In verse, look in chapter number 19 in verse 1. This is where we get a glimpse in heaven. I think this was my water. I think this was your water. <laughs> <sighs> ah, well, it ain't going to do any difference. All right, here we go. Revelation 19 and verse 1. And after these things. I heard a what? Of what? Great voice of what? Much people. How many people is going to be in heaven? Much. Much. <laughs> I like that. It helped me. Because I read the scripture said, Nair is the gate. Straight is the gate. Nair is the way that leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. But when you put together the few from across the ages it's going to end up that there's going to be much. <laughs> there's a lot of people in heaven. 
Heaven's going to be an occupied place. Folks get a picture of heaven, they go, my goodness, if only perfect people are in there, they don't even need but one room. We could all fit in the phone booth. Amen? Amen? But the Bible says there's much people there. You say, how'd they get there? They're going to sing a song how they got there, by the blood. But in chapter 19, verse 1, there was much people in heaven saying, let's try it, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. You say, preacher, every time you say something that we say in heaven, we're just praising God. Amen. Mm -hmm. You say, well, the first glimpse we get of people in heaven, they're around the throne singing a song praising God. Mm -hmm. And now we get the first time we hear voices of anybody in heaven saying anything, they're praising God. You say, well, hold on a second. Then in heaven, let me get this straight, we will be praising God. Is that right? You say, well, I don't like that. Well, you will. Amen. You say, well, I just think that's just wrong. Tell the one on the throne. Amen. You're going to have a ball in heaven. Amen. You say, why? He'll take your inhibition away from you so you won't worry about what people think. Aren't you glad? You won't worry about what somebody thinks about you. You won't worry about what somebody says about you. I used to go to a camp meeting every year, and those folks would get up praising God. Somebody told me one time, said, yeah, they go off to camp meeting and praise God because they can't do it at home. Everybody knows how they live. Preach. You know what? There might be some truth to that. <laughs> you say, oh, they sound all spiritual up there at that camp meeting. They drive three hours away from home, four hours away from home. They can be all holier now and praising God. No, they'd love to do it at home. They just don't want to get right at home. But you know what? When you get to heaven, everybody's right. You won't have to get right. So if you want to praise God, you just want, you'll be thinking you're doing it and you'll look and there'll be folks joining with you. They'll be like, oh, they started a praise service without us. Glory and honor. You might miss the first two words, but you'll jump right in there. Power unto God. I feel like everywhere we're in heaven, you'll see Jesus, the throne. You'll see what's going on. We walking by. Somebody be praising God, and they'll be in perfect harmony, and they'll be sitting there doing just like what God wants praise, and we'll just be like, oh, how you doing? Oh, they start. I'll be right back. And glory and power unto the God. I feel like we will just be in and out of praise all the time. All the time we'll be praising God. Why? He created us. He saved us. Well, they said salvation, and glory, and honor, and power unto the Lord our God. You say, what is this going on? This is heaven now. This is what heaven is like now. This is not the new heaven. This is not when He comes back. This is now. This is what heaven is like now. You say, wow. You mean, it, it's not they're sitting over there and fishing in the crystal sea? The Bible don't say that. Heaven's a wonderful place. But a lot of people have views that has nothing to do with the Word of God. And I base everything that I believe about heaven on this book. Right. Amen. Amen? Because heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Heaven is a wonderful place. You say, Grandma and Grandpa are there? I believe my Grandma and Grandpa are both there. And I have a feeling that they are fellowshipping with each other and enjoying their time together. But the number one thing going on in heaven is not the reunion with each other. It's not the songs. It's the one on the throne of God. The number one thing about heaven is Jesus is there. Amen. And I'm going to see Him. I want to see Him. Reminded of the lady that was in the hospital room. The man walked in to see her and he was getting ready to walk in. They said, she's about to die. You better run in real quick. She needs to say her last prayers or last whatever. And he walked in. He said, ma'am, I'm here to take your last confession. She said, let me see your hands. He held it out. Says, why? She said, imposter, imposter, imposter. They come in and says, what are you upset about, ma'am? She said, the one in my Bible that I'm confessed my sins to has two nail prints in his hand. And I want you to know, I'll confess to him and him alone. There is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And I want you to know, 
when you confess your sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Don't you confess your sins to me. I can't do a thing with them. I have enough problem with my own. Amen. Be quiet right there, baby. Amen. <laughs> but I want you to know, we will see Him. What time is it? It don't matter. Seven o'clock. Seven well, for the sake of being able to understand where we're going, let me show you. Go back to the slide. John gets a view in Revelation. Mm -mm -mm. You want to finish reading the praise? Go back to John, Revelation 19. Verse 4. Go, go verse 3 and 4. Revelation 19, verse 3. This is the rest of the praise session we'll have in heaven. And again they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye His servants, and ye that fear Him, both small and great. And I heard as it was the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of mighty thunder, and saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. That word omnipotent means all-powerful. He is the all-powerful God reigns. You know what? From the throne of God, there's going to be a megaphone saying, look, that's what it says, out of the throne. It says, a throne said, Praise our God, all ye His servants. And we'll say, okay. You say, that's a call to praise. That's pretty good. Now look over in chapter number 21. We've got judgment last week. Chapter 21 says, And I saw a what? New heaven and what? For the first heaven and the first earth were what? There's a new heaven coming. You say, my goodness, this heaven here that we just talked about, what a wonderful place. I know. You say the, the throne, it's got, I mean, it's like glass crystal down on the bottom and there's a throne and Him that sits on it. We're praising God. We're doing all that. I mean, it's like a one looks like a great place. I'd like to go. Yeah, you say, well, that, that's good. If it's nothing else, that's wonderful. I know it's wonderful, but that's not the end. If I ever ask you if any of y'all's ever been to, and I can name anything, the Virgin Islands, Hawaii, anywhere, if you thought the most tropical place that you could be at in the world, you say, I want to go there. So, oh, that's great. And then somebody told you, said, oh, but if you go there, you need to go to the best resort that's ever been that is there. You say, why? Because it's already the greatest place in the world, <laughs> but it's the greatest place in the greatest place in the world. And then all of a sudden, you thought you couldn't get any more excited, but now you're even more excited because you're going to the greatest place, at the greatest place in the world, and you're just like giddy. <laughs> well, this is what he's supposed to do right now. He's just showed us, and he said, I want you to go to heaven, and now I want to show you something coming down out of heaven. I want to show you the greatest thing that's coming from the greatest place ever. And it's in Revelation 21, verse number 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of where? Heaven. Prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Next Sunday night. Let's stand. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we looked at heaven like it is right now, tonight. <laughs> and dear God, we look forward next Sunday. Lord, if you're willing, we're going to look at heaven like it's going to be. I can't hardly grasp what it is now. 
Oh, but God, I thank You for Your Word that You showed us. Not only is it great now, not only is there praise and worship and glory and sinlessness and God, purity and praise and power, but Lord, there is coming a day that there's even going to get better. <laughs> wow. Lord, when You said in John 14, You left to prepare a place for us. You weren't talking about the place where You are now. You was talking about the place prepared as a bride for her husband. God, Lord, we'd be happy just to go where You are now. But dear God, I can't wait to see what You got prepared for us. Lord, I pray if there's one here that does not know You, oh God, dear God, help them realize I want to go to that place one day. I want to go be a part of that. Help them trust You. Dear God, we ask You, Lord, You'd take this study tonight. You would help us, God, that we might be able to draw closer to Your side. In Jesus' name.